Hello, pulmonary rehab friends. Julia O'Shea here, respiratory therapist, lung lady, here today to talk to you about this idea we refer to as bronchial hygiene, which basically just means taking care of your lungs, just like you have oral hygiene, you take care of your teeth. Um, this idea is about how to keep your lungs uh, healthy and then also what to do if you start to feel like you're getting sick. This um, talk, I'm gonna break it up into two because this talk obviously was um, created before the COVID-19 pandemic and I'm gonna stick to that original talk for this first part and then the second part I will bring in more of our current, um, at least what we know right now being almost June 2020 um, with what's going on in our world, how to stay healthy. I'll talk a little bit about uh, pneumonia, pneumonia vaccinations, things like that. So this is part one. Hope you enjoy it. And I'll try and move through this stuff a little bit um, quicker because I think it's common sense. I don't think anything that I'm saying here is out of the ordinary or what you would know or understand already. So let me get this PowerPoint started and we shall begin. Okay, so bronchial hygiene, taking care of your lungs so they can take care of you. So infection control, um, it's pretty obvious that if we can do our best to stay healthy, that is easier than getting that having to get better. So for those of you who have been sick, you probably understand or have experienced how long it can take to recover from a respiratory illness. It's not fun. Um, so some of the ways we do this is we get our rest. So sleep is super, super important. That's when our body goes into its natural healing mode or growth and repair. So if we're not sleeping, then we are depriving our body of that potential to heal itself. So the body is always trying to heal itself, but it does take rest, rest, relaxation, sleep, all of those things. Um, you are what you eat. So eating a balanced diet. Um, I know some people are on specialty diets for whatever reason, but really just make sure that you're getting, you know, your, your nutrients, your vegetables, your fruits, your protein, all those things that are recommended. And we do have another talk that's focused on nutrition. So that one will be coming up. Drink your fluids, stay hydrated. Um, some people are on fluid restrictions. Um, maybe if you had some cardiac issues, um, you may not be able to drink as much water, but this definitely correlates to, to mucus consistency and your body's overall functioning. And then of course, take all your medications the way you're supposed to. Other things with infection control, exercise. So. The benefits of engaging in a long-term exercise program is that one of the things that can help to decrease inflammation in the body. Um, so this goes for the lungs, this goes for your joints, just overall your, the health of your body because it was designed to move. So again, common sense, if you're a couch potato, you're not moving the body, um, your body doesn't have that ability to strengthen itself. So body has to move. Um, learning to manage stress. Stress can definitely weaken our immune system. It's not uncommon that when we are going through stressful times that we might get sick because our immune system is not at its full potential if you're under a lot of stress. Um, of course, get your, your flu shots, your pneumonia shots, especially if you have lung disease, and then anything that you are breathing or putting into your mouth to breathe in, your inhalers, your nebulizers, your CPAP, BiPAP machines, all those things. Keep that stuff clean, super important. Okay, so then we have this whole category called bronchial irritants. So if you're someone who has asthma, you know this very well because hopefully you are aware of what your bronchial irritants are. So remember the bronchi are the airways. And then obviously an irritant is something that triggers uh, inflammation, 
uh, mucus, smooth muscle tightening around the airways. So here's a list, fumes, aerosolized products, powders, dust, dirt, hustle cleaners, pokes, fire, fireplace smoke. You know, the list goes on and on, but really being aware, not all of these might trigger you, but there are definitely, these are things you don't want in your lungs. So remember that our lungs are the, the one organ that is exposed to the environment. So other than the skin, but the skin is designed to handle external things. But our lungs, we really want to protect them. So we want to keep this stuff out of our lungs. So how do we do that? So obviously everybody is aware of the idea of wearing a mask nowadays. Um, really quickly, you know, you've heard of this N95 mask, um, which is, uh, you know, it's, I'd say it's promoted less now unless you're in healthcare. To wear one of these um, but if you are someone who is working with fine particles uh, sanding maybe painting anything that there are really tiny particles that can get into your lungs with what you're doing um, definitely a good choice to wear an N95 mask because that is the type of mask that is going to seal tightly around your face and prevent those particles from getting in um, the cloth mask, the paper mask, those are always good to wear. I mean, we're wearing them more and more now when we're out in public, at the stores, even walking outside. Um, you know, and it, it used to be we would have people, I and mean, we still do, but if you had a cold, we would definitely recommend that you wear a mask to keep your bugs contained and not spreading to other people. So case in point, the COVID virus right now. Um, anytime you can increase ventilation in your house, so opening the windows, if you have an exhaust fan, all of that helps to keep the air around you clean. Uh, help, HEPA filters, air purifiers are a great choice um, to have in your home, especially if you have allergies. And then, of course, uh, we're in Vermont, so we know mold very well. There's a lot of humidity in the summertime. Um, so using a de dehumidifier can definitely help, um, especially if you have a basement that you can, you know, just build up of all that mold and humidity. Um, so trying to avoid, these are just different ways to avoid the bronchial irritants. All right, so harmful substances in your home that, again, common sense, but just good to be aware of these things. Very similar to the bronchial irritants, fumes, aerosolized products, powders, dust, dirt, bacteria, mold, mildew, you may not even be able to see it. It could be in the walls of your house. You know, I had a patient who got very, very sick because she had um, black mold in the, in the walls of her house and didn't even know it. It was getting sick and getting sick and getting sick until they finally figured that out. Um, household cleaners. I think some, sometimes people think, oh, well, I'm doing a good job of cleaning my house with bleach and all these chemicals. But for some people, that can definitely be a trigger um, and irritate your airways. Um, if you have to use those cleaners, again, think about using a mask. Um, but there are plenty of really good cleaners on the market that work really well that aren't um, bleach based or that aren't with uh, strong chemicals. So looking into those is definitely a good option. Um, and then the bug sprays, fireplace smoke, asbestos, you know, not as much anymore because we've learned a lot from the past about how dangerous asbestos is in the lungs. So um, it should be, if you have it in your house, it should be contained. You don't wanna be messing with it. But I know I've had many patients who, in the past have worked with asbestos very openly, no masks, because that's just what you did, you know, probably in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and you were just exposed to it, especially if you worked in um, construction or some of the trades. And then um, radon gas. So this is one of those things that I'm sure most of you have heard of radon gas, but it is a very heavy gas that it, it settles down in the bedrock of, of the earth and it's gonna be more common in basements. So it's recommended that if you have a basement, you should definitely check the radon levels in your home. And then maybe even checking other areas of your house. So here in Vermont, um, the Vermont Department of Health will send you a testing kit for free. You just have to put it 
in um, a closed area. There's not a lot of ventilation around it so that it can act, um, accurately measure uh, the, the radon levels. And, and the, the thing with radon is that it can cause lung cancer. It is, um, next to smoking, it is the leading cause of lung cancer. So not to be messed around with, um, it's referred to as the silent killer. So know if you have radon in your home. And then if you do, you would install a radon mitigation system. Okay, other things that can cause a bad breathing day. Um, I just like this cartoon, especially because we live in Vermont. Um, humidity, it's not you, it's me saying that to the heat. Yeah, humidity for sure, because there's so many water uh, molecules in the air that are competing um, with the with the oxygen with the atmospheric air when you breathe it in and it just can make you feel really sluggish so um, definitely makes it harder to breathe changes in barometric pressure um, emotions if you get upset over things definitely can trigger that allergies of course high altitudes right so i've talked about this in my other talk but um, if you're in Colorado, it's not that there's less oxygen there, it's that you're at a higher altitude. So decrease in barometric pressure, which means it's harder for that oxygen to get into your cells. And then of course, if you're not using your inhaler correctly, um, it's going to make your breathing a lot worse. Or if you forget to take it, you know, there's sometimes there's those inhalers you take twice a day and it can be easy to forget. So that will make your breathing worse. All right, I think we all know about hand washing these days, um, but super, super important to wash your hands. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through this quickly because I think you guys have had enough of this in the news and everything else, but it's probably one of the most important things you can do to stay healthy. And uh, you know, this is the this is the drill. You know, this is more like if you're in a public place, but you turn on the water, wet your hands, get your soap, 20 seconds, right? Rub back, forth, all around. Don't forget the thumbs, the knuckles, the fingers, 20 seconds. Happy birthday song. Uh, sing the alphabet. And then uh, rinse for about 10 seconds. Try to rinse downward so that everything washes off. Grab your towel, leave the water on. Dry your hands, use a towel, turn off the water, um, use the towel to open the door, hopefully the trash can's close by. You guys know the drill. Um, alcohol, so again, just as effective as washing your hands with soap and water. Um, if you have visible dirt on your hands, you're gonna wanna wash with soap and water. But same kind of thing, 20 seconds, rub it in, get it all over the place. Nowadays, it's always good to have one of these in your car, in your purse, just available, especially if you're leaving your house. All right, um, oral hygiene. So keeping your teeth clean. Um, you know, when I was working in the ICU, it was not uncommon that we would see people on ventilators because they did not practice good oral hygiene, meaning they may have gotten an abscess or something that they ignored and ended up with um, an infection which spread into their blood, which got into their heart. So not to be taken lightly, you know, do the flossing, the brushing, see your dentist as you can. You can even clean your tongue, get your, um, even if you have dentures, make sure you get your mouth checked and keep everything clean. All right, managing your health. If you get sick, so um, if you get sick and you have to call your doctor, what they may do, this is a, a common um, type of prescription for someone with lung disease, is they may add steroids, prednisone, and then they may start you on antibiotics. So depending on you and your body, um, you and your doctor should have a plan on what to do if you get sick. And if you've never had that conversation with your doctor, have it now. Um, super important. You know, some people have action plans in place, um, but always good to ask your doctor, especially if you have a pulmonologist, what should I do if I get sick? All right, antibiotics, you guys know this, are used for bacterial infections only. That's why we don't have 
an antibiotic for the flu. It's only used for bacteria, and these should be prescribed judiciously, meaning you just shouldn't be taking all these antibiotics all the time because we don't want to build these superbugs that become resistant um, to antibiotics. And know your allergies, you know, that those can be almost just as dangerous as the infection itself. Know your interactions with your other drugs. You know, your pharmacist is a great ally. I think of them as like the safety net because they should know exactly how your current medications will interact with the antibiotics. And then of course, finish them. Do not stop taking them if you feel better. Finish all of them. You do not want you know, some other infection to come in because you've stopped and didn't finish the course. All right, when to call your doctor. So obviously things start to feel worse. More shortness of breath at rest, you're wheezing more, you're coughing more than normal, you're noticing an increase in mucus production, mucus color is changing, getting thicker, your chest feels tight, um, irritability, change in personality, you know, somebody else might have to tell you that, but <laughs> um, just overall, like things aren't right with you. Uh, fluid retention, your hands and feet, maybe you're more forgetful, you're confused, slurred speech, sleepier than normal, fever, um, morning headaches, dizziness, restlessness, the list goes on. Increased fatigue, lack of energy. Um, Using more pillows or sleeping in a chair if you don't do that normally. Um, a great one to be aware of, especially if you use oxygen, um, is skin color changes. So if you notice maybe the tips of your fingers have like a, a bluish or gray tint, you can also see that around your nose and your mouth could mean that you don't have enough oxygen in your body. So again, that pulse oximeter is your best friend. Uh, breathing faster than normal when you're sitting at rest, or maybe your heart rate is faster than it is normal. And I highly encourage people to, you know, just start to understand what are my vital signs when I'm at rest? What should they be? What's my heart rate? What's my oxygen level? If you have a blood pressure cuff, you know, knowing those things are so important nowadays because people aren't going into their doctor's office as often as they used to. So understanding that having that health literacy is super important. All right, one of my favorite topics is mucus or what we call sputum. So this is the stuff deep down in your lungs. Um, so unless you're a respiratory therapist, you probably don't love to talk about mucus. Um, but it is good to understand what your mucus looks like. What's your baseline if you're someone who's dealing with a cough, congestion, bringing things up. And some people live with that day to day, and that's fine. But know what yours looks like. Um, is there a change? Is it thicker? Is it harder to get out? Um, color change, you know, normally it would say it should be clear or white. Um, not to say that that's for everybody. Some people do have some color at their baseline. And then noticing if it turns yellow or green, that's often a sign of infection. And then if you ever see blood in your mucus, you should always call your doctor. You should never ignore that. Okay, so calling your doctor sooner than later. If you're sick on Monday, don't wait till Friday. I know a lot of people think, oh, well, this is just a little cold. I'm just going to wait for it to pass. If you are a person living with lung disease, do not mess around trying to wait things out. That's fine if that's part of your plan with your doctor. But I always say I, I would call your doctor, just run it by them, talk to the nurse, talk to the respiratory therapist, just to check in. Because sometimes you, you reach that tipping point and then all of a sudden it's like, bam, it's, it's, it's so bad that you could end up having to go to the emergency room. So don't get to that point, don't delay. How to recover if you do get a lung infection. So get your rest, um, stay home, uh, drink your fluids, take all your antibiotics, keep your follow-up appointments. And then why is it hard to get the mucus out? So I know many people with lung disease 
deal with that chronic congestion in their chest. And it is very hard to get it out. It's like, it feels like it's just stuck right there. So there are so many nooks and crannies inside your lungs where it can get stuck. And sometimes you have these strong coughing attacks and you finally get that mucus up and it's like, you know, maybe the size of the tip of your fingers, just the tiniest little amount because that small amount can clog up these tiny little airways. So it doesn't take much. Okay, controlled coughing. So this is a great technique to be able to practice, just like we practice our, our breathing. This is a way to keep your airways clean. So this does not have to be just when you have mucus. So the way this works is you take a slow, deep breath in and you hold it for five seconds and then cough twice. <laughs> Pause and then gently Take an inhale breath, take a break if you need to, and then repeat. So you don't wanna do this, do the cough, and then suck a bunch of air in, because if you loosened anything, it's going to push it back down. So you wanna get it out. Um, another device or a device that you can ask your doctor if it's appropriate is called a acapella, a flutter valve, sometimes referred to as the green pickle. They look differently, they all don't look like this. Um, but what this device does is it helps to clear the mucus or to move the mucus so that you can cough it up. And the way this works is there's a setting on the back, a resistance that makes it easier or harder to blow into. It's got a mouthpiece on it and it's very similar to this technique. You would take a slow deep breath and hold it and then blow. Gently sniff. And then maybe if you feel like something moved around you could <coughs> cough and then do it again and what usually what people find with this is that it's not instantaneous it's not like all of a sudden you have this mucus clear it might be later on in the day that that you're coughing stuff up so some people use this device twice a day it might be 10 times in the morning and 10 times at night if you're someone who deals with um, mucus pretty consistently with your lungs, or some people use it just when they're getting sick. So you could hear the vibrations, it rattles my airways as the airways are, are rattling, it helps to knock mucus around. So the idea is it loosens it and then you can cough it up. These also should be cleaned. So just like I mentioned with all of your respiratory equipment, mouthpiece comes off, lifts up, then you have the, this is the little part that rattles warm soapy water, let it air dry. Great tool, great tool to have. All right, so following these steps, you can help to, to manage your cough. Don't let your cough take over your life. Um, so planning ahead can help to prevent those sudden coughing spells that get you into trouble. And I know this is, this is not like a guarantee. I know many people live with that chronic cough and it's very irritating it's very embarrassing you know it happens at the worst times when you're trying to do something you know if you're going to church or at the store and of course nowadays when you start coughing everybody looks at you because they're like oh, are they sick and i know if you have lung disease that's especially hard because that's just part of your life that's what your lungs do they are designed to cough to keep your lungs clean. The cough is your best friend because that's how it, your lungs take care of themselves. Okay, one of the last things I'll talk about is the COPD action plan. This could also be called an asthma action plan. Um, but this is a plan that you set up with your physician that is part of your um, healthcare record. So if you were to get sick, this plan helps to expedite your treatment. So the way it works here at the medical center is you would call the pulmonary clinic, you would um, talk to one of the, a nurse or respiratory therapist and they would run through this list of questions and by the end of it, 
um, they come up with the medication or recommendation on what you should do to take care of yourself. And then this way, you don't have to wait on your physician to call you back. You get those medications in your system right away within probably hours as soon as you initiate this action plan. So good to know if you have one of these. If you don't have COPD or asthma, still good to ask your doctor, what's my plan? What do I do if I were to get sick? And they could kind of set something up very similar for you. Okay, that's all I have for now. Um, please come to class with questions and I will be sending out part two, which I'll talk a little bit more about flu. Uh, vaccinations, pneumonia, things like that. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful. And until next time, keep those lungs healthy. All right, take care. Adios.